Thank you so much. It is wonderful uh, to be here at Europe Ana, and I was asked to speak about some updates to our activities in the Digital Public Library of America project, but I've realized over the last couple of days that not everyone knows what the Digital Public Library of America is, so I thought I would talk a little bit about what the project is first before I tell you about what we're doing. Um, DPLA, first, here's some new links. We just put up a website yesterday, so the URL is dp.la. If that doesn't work, we're having a little bit of technical issues with it. Please use the longer URL, digitalpubliclibraryofamerica.org. Uh, that's our website. Then we have a wiki, which is the cyber.law.harvard.edu slash DPLA link below. That has a lot more uh, information, you know, notes from workshops and that kind of thing. Anyway, uh, the Digital Public Library of America project is an American project that seeks to provide coherent access to content much like Europeana from a variety of institutions, from museums, from libraries, from archives, and to do it um, in a way that will encourage participation from users, that will encourage innovation and new development. So we'll do so by providing content on the most open platform possible, uh, subscribing to the most open principles possible. Uh, there's already a lot of existing infrastructure in the United States, so the project does not seek to start from square one, but rather seeks to uh, capitalize on or take pieces of infrastructure that exist, examine them, and then figure out how to build bridges, how to build connections between these pieces of infrastructure so that users can have a much more coherent whole uh, for their experience. So we see the project as consisting of basically code, content, metadata, and then a layer of tools and services on an open platform, and most importantly, community. Community is, is a very important part of this project, and we've spent some time building it. The project is actually one year old exactly. Uh, a group of about 40 leading librarians met at Harvard last year on a sunny October Saturday to ask the question, would it be worthwhile to work closer together and to try to create a more a coherent infrastructure? And the answer could have been no, because there are already some great pieces of, of digital libraries that exist. You have the Hathi Trust, you have the Internet Archive, you have these big, uh, you know, extremely well-designed and functioning pieces. But the answer from the crowd there was, yes, we should work uh, more closely together. And luckily, we had uh, some foundations were there with us at that time, and they said, well, we'll fund you to get started. So we have been supported by the Alfred P. Sloan Foundation from the beginning. And the we, uh, I should talk about a little bit, the, the, the core, I guess, of the project started as the steering committee. And we like to joke and say the steering committee was basically anyone who didn't get to their flight fast enough after that meeting uh, on October. There are 17 directors of libraries, uh, of some of the great uh, public libraries, the Boston Public Library, the Baltimore Public Library, San Francisco. There are directors of great research libraries like Stanford and Harvard, uh, the head of the Internet Archive, uh, the Library of Congress, uh, the Council on Library and Information Resources. So a uh, very powerful, active, engaged group of leaders working together as the steering committee for this effort. Uh, in January of this year, we formed a secretariat with funding from the Sloan Foundation at the Berkman Center at Harvard. That's where I am with some wonderful colleagues, and we are basically uh, the, 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 the glue, I guess. We are the, the collaboration place for the project. We're driving the agenda ahead and helping to build the community. The, the project structure is basically built out of the steering committee, the secretariat, and then six major work streams. We've chunked work into these six big areas, which are content and scope, audience and participation. You can see more about this on our sites, but things like technical aspects, legal aspects, business models, and governance. And under each one of these uh, work streams, we have two co-chairs, and then we have 10 to 15 conveners. We've tried to pull in people uh, the conveners act like a program committee and the co-chairs chair, of course. And we've tried to pull in people from not only libraries, museums, and archives, but also from 
technology companies and from education. Uh, we've got lawyers who are involved. So we're trying to build that big tent that will bring all of the experience and the insight we need to build a truly uh, functioning, useful, open digital library. Our timetable is we'll have two weeks from now an official kickoff for the next two years of work. That will also likely be funded by uh, private money by foundations. And we'll have a number of public meetings, uh, any number of workshops during that time. And we plan to emerge in April 2013 with a detailed work plan for this Digital Public Library of America with a new governance structure and with some kind of a functioning uh, prototype of a system. So we have a, a very fast track ahead. Uh, one thing people have asked me over the last day or two is about the name, that it's called Digital Public Library of America, and whether we see this as just an American project. We do not. We, we, we use the uh, Amer of America to show that the institutions that are involved as participants are American institutions. But we very much intend to make this project part of a global information community, and we see ourselves as trying to plan from the very beginning to, to be interoperable with, certainly with what you're doing here, and with the rest of the world. And because we are such good citizens, our very first technical meeting was held in Amsterdam at the University of Amsterdam. It was hosted by our friend Lucy Guibault, who is here, who's smiling and can stand up and say hello, Lucy. And uh, anyway, we had this meeting on global interoperability and linked data, and we invited some of you to come. You generously came and spent time with us and shared your experience and insights with us, which we very much took to heart and used. So uh, what's happened since we saw you in May? We went straight back home, we went to the Library of Congress in June, and we had a meeting to draft technical principles, which you can find on our wiki. I hope we listened well, I think we heard you well, and uh, we want to keep that conversation going. In July, we finished building that community that I was just talking about, the steering committee, the secretariat, all of the co-chairs and workstream conveners, and we laid out the structure of the project, the, the calendar, and so on. That being in place, we completed some funding proposals. I don't have any news to, uh, to share with you on that today, but hopefully we will quite soon at our plenary have more news on funding. We're feeling very positive and very supported by uh, many foundations who are very interested in this work. We ultimately hope sometime to have government funding, but we don't think that's going to happen soon. So we're, we feel extremely lucky to have this foundation funding. And uh, in September, we had the selection of proposals from the DPLA beta sprint. This being a technical conference, I thought that would be of the most interest to you here. What was or is the beta sprint? The beta sprint was an open call for proposals, open to anyone in the world, to build a piece of or the entirety of, or to lay out how to build a piece of or the entirety of a digital public library of America. We did this because there was so much interest. Once we announced the project, there was so much interest in actually starting to build something that we thought, well, why don't we open the doors wide and see what, what people uh, conceive of as pieces of the project. So we ultimately had 39 full submissions to this beta sprint. Uh, there was no prize beyond an invitation to come to Washington to present at this public plenary in two weeks. So we thought that was quite good participation. And this is just a picture of our panel hard at work uh, with their selection. I wanted to share with you the six selections, the six primary selections from that panel. And our idea is that this is a place to start development from and that we'll move outwards from there. So I thought by sharing this with you, perhaps we could, uh, some ways to collaborate might emerge. And actually, there are already some collaborations happening between uh, Europeana people and, and DPLA or beta sprint proposals. So the first uh, proposal is called the Digital Collaboration for America's National Collections. And that is a, uh, a proposal from the National Archives, the Smithsonian Institution, and the Library of Congress. They basically modeled a faceted search 
aggregator and played with a, a small data set to see how that would go. And I think it was chosen, first and foremost, to highlight the importance of these collections and the depth and breadth of the collections that already exist in some of our great federal institutions. Uh, the second project, you can speak to Stefan Gradman about this and to Rachel Frick, who's here, who is the director of the Digital Library Federation, and they submitted this proposal. It's the DLF DCC, the Digital Collections and Curation, or Digital Collections and Content uh, proposal. Anyway, it is a large scale cultural heritage aggregation that is already working with Europeana uh, on the, perhaps an experimental portal, merging data, perhaps uh, new models for data integration across two pro the two projects. Uh, the next one is called Extramuros. This is a, a project of the MetaLab at Harvard. It, it wants to fundamentally redefine the way that people uh, search for and curate and share collections. It's working with multimedia right now. It's on an open source uh, HTML5 platform. It's working over uh, public open APIs already and will provide its own API. So that is a very interesting project. One more, I'm getting the high sign that I'm running out of time, a government publications project, which is also about collaborative digitization, working with linked data, and using crowdsourcing to enrich that linked data. And then our new friends here, Metadata Interoperability Services, Mint, uh, out of Athens. We're very excited that we actually have a basis now for conversation, for, for collaboration. I understand this is about backend services to support a, a an aggregation of the size of Europeana or of the proposed DPLA. And finally, Shelf Life and Library Cloud. This is a new way to search and uh, interact with collections that uses a graphical interface using the most common representation of a library, the shelf, and then uses actually anonymized use data from 15 different libraries to uh, fuel social interactions. So that's a very interesting project too. Ending with a slide on our, our plenary, please take a look. Uh, some of you will come to that. We're excited about it. We're just very inspired to be here and see what a strong community you have, and we hope to add to that in the future. So thank you. <laughs>